There is a consummate battle between good and evil in this world. We all struggle with it in our own daily lives. But confined within these walls, kids are able to see that struggle by using the very hand they've been dealt. You know, if anything, they're here, they're in a church doing something fun. And it, it gives them that kind of connection of, hey, I'm in a church and I'm having fun. They don't s feel so intimidated by it. In church, this is where some otherwise at-risk kids are getting Bible lessons without the preaching. It's a blessing to have a church that supports you know, ministries like this. We've got a number of kids here today that have come from um, a very low, uh, pr practically poverty-stricken poverty, poverty -stricken part of Rochester. They've been brought here by, by a, a group running a mission, and this is just a totally foreign type of thing for them, but such a, such a positive you know, way to break the, the chain of, of violence and, and everything for them. It's a card game called Redemption, toted as an action-packed collectible trading card game based on the Bible. Players send their heroes into battle against their opponent's evil hordes in an attempt to rescue lost souls. All heroes and evil characters are actual people taken from the Bible. With redemption, you're not trying to kill your opponent. You're trying to use heroes from the Bible like David, um, Matthew, Mary, uh, Elijah to try and rescue lost soul cards. And your opponent is trying to stop you with evil characters like Goliath or Judas Iscariot, that type of thing. It's a game that is played nationwide, and Justin Allstadt is a seven-time national champ. You know, I have so many friends online that I've met through Redemption. It's unbelievable. Some of my best friends, in fact, I've met, you know, over the internet, um, through the game, and, you know, just having fellowship with them, talking with them about stuff, that's definitely a huge, a huge positive for, uh, for playing. And for Chris Bainey, this ministry is also his business. The society's getting so polarized, and it's kind of, unfortunately, an us versus them thing, and whereas the mainstream has become so secularized and trying to pull God out of everything, it's the Christian side of the fence is, has kind of said, well, okay, well, we're going to have to come up with our own, own games and our own, own music and our own videos and our own, just because if the mainstream is going to pull that out, we need to have that available because we, we want God to be a part of every facet of our life. It concerns me, you know, with the, the stuff that they you know, some of the secular card games and, you know, obviously they're not going to be playing the, the really dark, you know, games right away. But, you know, when they start out with something that looks more innocent, you know, they're kind of, there's a progression that can kind of happen there. It's, it's the desensitization thing. You know, a friend of mine played it when he was a teenager, played Magic the Gathering, really got deep into it. And one day, a neighborhood guy, an adult, he says, hey, you know, would you like to learn to cast those spells for real? Well, you know, it's just a cool game. Wow, neat, you know? So he starts learning how to actually do some of these things and really ended up in a very, very dark place. The kids ask questions about their biblical characters. They come together for fun and in turn also get fellowship. Planting seeds, it's, it's getting them hooked into something that down the road can really lead them to bigger things. You know, they, they're hanging around church, you know, playing redemption, maybe they get involved in children's ministries, you know, then maybe they get the youth program, and it just, you know, you know, whenever it keeps kids around church, is, you know, it's probably a good thing. I've, I've really kind of said, you know, God, you know, you've got a plan for what I'm doing here, for what the business is going to do, for who I'm going to touch, and I just let him drive, and I kind of, go along for the ride. I try and do what, what seems to be the next thing that he wants me to do.